Um, I'd like to start by um, extending a welcome to some members of the North Andover Police Department, Officer Driscoll, Sergeant Stardy, Officer Lynch, Officer Bader, Officer Nagra, Officer Caffrey, and the Chief, Chief Charles Gray. I'd like to um, welcome them tonight and ask them if they'd like to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. So if we could all stand. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, I would like to ask that everyone just um, for a moment of silence for the tragedies, for the, um, the officers, the five officers that were killed in Dallas and the three officers that were killed in Baton Rouge, I'd like to have a moment of silence for one minute. Uh, to remember those and honor those officers. Okay, thank you for that. And Officers, Sergeant, Chief, thank you for your service. Um, I'm really um, very happy to see the residents of this town reaching out to the, to the police department, letting you know how much we appreciate and how much we honor your service. And um, I'm with the, uh, the board say anything that they would like. Okay. Obviously, I feel the same way. Our, whether it be police or fire, you're the guys running into the building when everyone else is running out. And it, it's been a, a strong um, presence for the police because of all the tragedies. But it, again, during riot situations and tough situations, even the fire department is also involved. But we really appreciate everything that you do. But I'd also like to add that prayers for those who are still fighting for their lives mm -hmm. and their families. Absolutely. And um, thank you very much for taking care of the people in our town and, and those who visit us. It says, says a lot, right? The organic response. You guys are well fed last week in the spray. Right? Whoever does social media caught every single one of those on Facebook, and it says so much about the town that organically everybody just thought, let's just go down there and. That doesn't even come thank close you. to the support we got that you saw on social media. But on behalf of everyone standing here and the officers that couldn't make it, and we stand united just like every other department in the, in the country. And, you know, we're hyper vigilant, but yet we're still maintaining our ethics and standards, and we're going to train even harder and make sure that, you know, if we have a, a chance to prevent something like that, we're going to. Chief, if there's anything that you think that the department needs to assist you in this, whether it's equipment or, as you said, more training or whatever, please do not hesitate to ask the Board of Selectmen and the town manager. Um, we'll do. I'll be waiting to hear from the officers on the street and see what they need, and I'll be happy to come back and report to and request it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you all for coming in tonight. We appreciate Thanks. your time. Okay. Uh, first on the agenda tonight is approval of the minutes. Uh, we have two meetings, uh, June 20th and June 30th. Uh, do I have a motion? Mr. Chair, I move approval of the minutes for June 20th. Open session is written in June 30th. Open session minutes as written. I have second. a motion from Mr. Medeley and a second from Selectman DeCalagero. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Meeting minutes are approved. Um, next on the agenda, um, two things we really like to do here is one is welcome new employees, and the other is to say goodbye to uh, <laughs> retiring employees who obviously have a, no, 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 because look at the smile on his face. So and he, it's not and, he's, and he's in his shorts and sandals and or sneakers. Shorts. He should have done it 40 years ago. So um, we'd like to recognize uh, Gene Willis tonight. Uh, for his um, years of service to North Andover. Come on up, Gene. Well, I'll come with it. And uh, for his uh, retirement, and congratulating him on his retirement. So I'd like to read this certificate of appreciation presented to Eugene Willis for over 10 years of dedicated service to the town as Director of Engineering. Your professionalism, dedication, and integrity have been a credit to yourself, the Department of Public Works, and the entire town of North Andover. Thank you on behalf of North Andover and the best of you in your retirement. Congratulations by the North Andover Board of Select 
second July 18th. So much for your you. Thank you. I want to tell you I appreciate the ability to work for the town, my, my hometown, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I just can't believe that 10 years went by so fast. It, it, it was great. It's great to know that the town's still the way it always used to be. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, Jane. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> okay, moving along. Uh, election update from Joyce. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Uh, I'm here this evening to seek a vote for you to open the polls at 6 a.m. for the November 8th election. We normally do this every two years, uh, and it does require a vote from the Board of Selectmen. Right, you may have that further down your agenda. We, we do have them okay. in consent that items. Um, if you wanted to give us an update on, on the okay. current status of the election, then we'll take that into consent. Okay. What we'll be looking at is, uh, and you can keep it in mind, is we will have early voting for the first time for the November 8th election. Uh, we'll have to make decisions closer to the actual time of the election. We don't have regulations yet. They're seeking either to have an alternate additional location to have early voting. Early voting will be different than absentee voting. Uh, from pr a procedural point of view, the, the actual regulations have not been um, issued by the Secretary of State. Probably will not have them until mid-August mid, um, or closer to September. So wh what that will do is allow people to actually come vote early. Uh, we may have extended hours if that's a possibility. It will be dependent on when we move back to town hall uh, because the early voting period starts the 24th of October and ends the 4th of November. So that's going to you know, factor into what we're going to be able to do for location because it's, it's separate from the actual office procedure you'll have different you'll have somebody located in a in a different location with a voting list and the early voting ballot so we'll keep you um, posted with that at, because where we have 19,000 voters we're going to try to encourage as much absentee voting and as much early voting as possible to be able to handle um, what we anticipate to be a very high turnout election um, and, and how are we going to encourage that are we going to put some advertising up we're going to uh, we'll be doing press release Leases plus bombarding with information about how it works. So we do have online voter registration now and the ability for the voter to check their status. So we, we, we implore people, if you haven't voted before, you haven't voted in a long time, just either give us a call or go online. It's very easy. You can actually register now online. It comes directly through to us. Could not be easier. Uh, for the presidential primary, we had 290 people register to vote on the last day and had one person come into town hall. So it's very effective. We're happy to take your phone calls or your emails to have you check your, your voter status ahead of time while we still have time to be able to get you registered. Um, and also an update, we have a September 8th primary election so that where all the focus is going to be on November, there is going to be a primary election. It's a Thursday because of its proximity to Labor Day. So the polls will be open at the high school between 7 a.m. and 8 p.m. Uh, for the primary. We'll be posting ballots for the primary election on the website as soon as we have them released by the Secretary of the Commonwealth. It's a very we don't want to say low-key election. You're seeing um, a lot of candidates on the ballot for sheriff and some of the other state rep and state senator. There's no opposition on either ballot for some of those candidates. So we'll have them all up there. Or um, in the last day to register to vote for that election is Friday on uh, August 19th. And the uh, Chief Gray has been very gracious about letting us do voter registration where it's a Friday from noon to 8 p.m. Um, at the police station, um, which, is, which is a huge help to us because normally you would be in the building from noon to 8 p.m. And he was very <coughs> gracious to, we, we did it in the past when we had another election that fell on the, the special town meeting that fell on a Saturday. Uh, people could go into the police station. We didn't have anybody come, but it was available. So we'll be doing a lot of, um, 
uh, advertising for that, but that was very, um, very much appreciated by not having to have um, any security issues of being in, in the building till 8 o'clock. Um, I imagine that cuts down on voter fraud, too, when it's in the polling station. Right. I'm joking, everyone. <laughs> this is a joke. <laughs> <laughs> it's like so serious. It's but again, that information will it's be pretty on good. the it's internet. Good. It'll be internet on website. cable TV. It'll be in the paper. Yes. Probably maybe even a, a robocall or two and a, an email, right? Absolutely. And we're planning on doing the Board of Registrars and I are planning on doing informational things for cable that will not only just explain what the whole process is going to be, but actually walk people through the registration process, how you're going to come into the high school. Uh, we're also thinking of maybe having the police do something about traffic patterns of showing people, you know, this is where you're going to come in, this is where you can park um, on a, you know, election day so that we can get as much information out to the public. And if you have any suggestions for early voting sites or anything like that, just let me know. Uh, um, as is, we're hoping to finalize some of that and get the word out. Yes. You're anticipating, I presume, in November, at least it's going to be a very busy election. We could be looking at 90, 95% turnout, um, and that's a lot of people. Uh, we normally, for a presidential election, might have as many as 2,500 absentee ballots, which are different. Uh, that's, that's why the early voting was put in place to try to alleviate having huge lines. And, and our, it, our issue is less about lines inside as traffic outside. So. You know, we'll be working closely with the police department and putting as much information out there for people. Or if people have, that's why the 6 a.m. opening is a, is a help to commuters, but also people who might not be able to have a flexible schedule to have them, uh, you know, vote early. Early voting is also available by mail, so that the request can come in and we can mail it out for early voting ballots. There are going to be different standards of what you can do voting early than absentee voting so we'll try to make sure we pattern it so that whatever somebody's individual needs are but the biggest thing is double checking the voter status because um, we have plenty of time to help and to guide people um, the last thing I want to do on election day is have a lot of people come who have not changed their voter registration status uh, I mean if they've moved in North Andover they're okay but if they've come from another city or town um, and it's not unusual for us to have seven or eight hundred people come they have voting issues on election day so we want to try to eliminate as much of that as possible we're always always glad to have people contact us directly send me an email or call the office uh, okay. well I will say that we always appreciate the work that you do 365 days a year but this time of year especially when we have a presidential election and a primary in September thank you so much well you're very Great. welcome so we have hours. lots of well, help why don't we stay there we'll take uh, I'll take a chairman's prerogative and I'll move that consent item um, now so that we can open we can vote on the uh, 6 a.m. Uh, poll opening so I'm going to just jump down to consent item B uh, if someone would like to make a motion on that one. Mr. Chairman, motion to move that the Board of Selectmen approve changing the election schedule um, for November 4th? November 8th. No, excuse me, November 8th um, to 6 a.m. For polls to open at 6 a.m. and close at 8 p.m. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion on that? Everyone's okay with that? Six. So the voting hours will be 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. on November 8th. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank you again, Dennis. Thank you. Okay. Um, <coughs> next on communication announcements, we have a Mass Works grant for downtown improvements. Mr. Capoy, will be presenting this tonight? Well, thanks very much for being here. Team it up. Let's see if I get this right. Do you want to be going to Mark something now? I just want to note that I, I actually connected to this. No, you just no wonder we couldn't I connect. You blocked me out. All thanks to Chris Daniels that uh, the main camp. He was helping me through all that. So, um, good evening. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, and members of the board. Um, First of all, I'd like to take an opportunity. I'm glad Jean's 
Oh, Gene left. <laughs> uh, it's funny he was just there. I, I wanted to thank Gene. He worked very closely, as you know, with the with the, uh, uh, the whole division, community and economic development division. We relied on him heavily, and uh, always grateful for uh, his efforts. I'm sorry to hear any of that. Um, <coughs> This is, uh, we'll just tee this up, um, this is really about creating opportunities. Did I jump ahead or is there uh, yeah, That's good. Okay. Um, in the downtown corridor, um, certainly before even I came on board, um, there's been a focus, I know, of this board and, and others to really um, to bring a vibrancy to downtown. And we think uh, with this program, and I'll get into that very uh, at a high level, um, we can create opportunities to foster that growth within the downtown and uh, increase investment and truly make it a destination point. Um, we worked, uh, reached out to TEC um, and uh, introduced uh, Mike Myers from TEC, also Mitch Keene is uh, back there, <laughs> principal at TEC, uh, to look at ways uh, and what we could do as a, a town to help spur that development and those investments and um, the Commonwealth and just so you know TEC's had some uh, pretty good successes they've had two grants uh, in Burlington um, Chelsea I know uh, Methuen Haverhill they've had some success also two in Lawrence I think the latest being <coughs> what you see going on on Merrimack Street right near our border uh, you know Sutton Street um, so uh, we reached out to TEC, walked the area, and really looked for a um, uh, things we could do to make this a pedestrian-friendly uh, downtown, a safer downtown. I think what we find, um, many of us know that the uh, Main Street has really kind of turned into a uh, kind of cut through. Mm -hmm. And we see traffic, not zooming, but certainly not slowing up either. Um, so, uh, you know, it was nice to see from Mike and Mitch, uh, the engineer's eyes, as to things we could do uh, immediately, frankly, uh, to make a, a big impact. Um, and that's what Mike will get into today. Um, I want to stress what, what you're seeing is this is really a concept. Um, what you see in the pictures uh, might be elements uh, for discussion or further, but um, this is really uh, relying on TEC's uh, expertise as to what the state's looking for for <coughs> successful grants, uh, what the street could be, and, and things we could do to uh, accomplish what we need. Um, that being said, uh, I've had some initial conversations uh, with some people downtown, principally uh, Dave Steinberg at his RCG, the East and West Mill. Um, Floated this by him. Uh, we had actually met with them a few times and some things. Very supportive of this plan um, and of the long term vision that it contemplates and is hoping to work for it. Uh, we've had some others that uh, also are excited about what you'll see in, in doing what, in concert with uh, the state, what we're proposing is uh, undergrounding the uh, utilities, the lines on Main Street. Uh, that was a very high on uh, some people's list as they thought that was just a great thing, something the town, I believe, has tried to do and wanted to do for a very long time. We think this is a great opportunity to do that, leverage what we can do and uh, get some significant uh, investment as well from the Commonwealth. Uh, so with that, I'd like to turn it over to Mike. Okay. Uh, good evening. Um, I've got a, a very brief PowerPoint presentation prepared uh, to introduce you to the, the town's MassWorks application. Um, at TEC, you know, we're looking to, to support Eric and others from the town um, over the next six weeks as we advance this application. Uh, it's due to the state at the end of August. Uh, this first uh, graphic here um, is something that we can supplement the application with. Um, this is certainly a draft and something we'll advance over the next six weeks. Um, <clears throat> the area in red basically shows the location of the improvements. Uh, we're calling them the Main Street Corridor improvements from Sutton Street to Water Street and then a short section of Water Street as well. Uh, the two, tr two things we're really trying to capture with this graphic as we supplement that application is we want to show once the improvements are built, again that area in red, that we can really support economic development, housing opportunities, 
within the town center, which is the area shown in yellow on the graphic, as well as the mills over on High Street, <coughs> located um, or shown in, in light blue there. Um, the second thing we, we'd really like to capture with this is that once those improvements are in place, that this could open the door for some future potential um, projects. And on the graphic, we do call the, the purple shaded areas as planned. Um, we'll change that to potential or something along those lines. As we haven't done a lot of planning, these are more or less ideas. But again, to show that intent um, that this project could be uh, a small portion of something greater as we open the doors for other opportunities. These are things that we've found uh, to be um, something the state likes to see on other successful uh, applications. <clears throat> uh, this slide here essentially shows the, the Main Street corridor improvements at a very high level. We haven't zoomed in here intentionally because we haven't, we're at such an early stage, we haven't really looked at a lot of the details. Um, three of the, the major components I, I'd like to talk to are, um, if you start to the left of the graphic, uh, we'd be looking at a full reconstruction of Main Street at Sutton Street to include a new traffic signal. Uh, we'd also look throughout the corridor at opportunities for traffic calming. Uh, to Eric's point, he mentioned this is a, uh, can be used as a kind of a cut through. And we'd look to calm traffic as they come through the corridor in two ways. Uh, one, we'd look to reduce lane widths. Uh, there's some pretty wide lanes out there, all 15 feet. We'd like to reduce those and, and see them more like 10, 11 feet. Um, the other way to calm traffic is to make some minor modifications to the curbing out there. At your pedestrian crossings, you can bring the curbing in a little bit, reduce crossings, uh, make it so pedestrians are more visible to motors as they approach, and make some minor modifications at intersections. Uh, I stress minor because we have to be mindful of all that on-street parking. If we start to lose on-street parking, we have an impact to businesses, and it's kind of counterproductive of what we're trying to, to achieve out there with economic development. So we have to be very mindful of that and um, make sure they're, they're very minor um, modifications. The um, third component here is, is multimodal. It's looking to improve uh, pedestrian, bicycle, and, and transit. Um, we'd look to reconstruct the sidewalks, look at opportunities for bike lanes, or uh, potentially like a shared lane, um, and look for opportunities to improve accessibility to the MBRTA line that travels uh, Main Street to the McGovern Station in Lawrence. Um, <clears throat> you say a new traffic signal, there's an existing traffic signal there today. There is one, yeah, it would be upgraded to um, include some of the latest technology with vehicular detection and, and things like that. Yep. Is there enough room? To put in a bicycle lane along with traffic going both ways, I just don't. It's, it's a struggle as it is right of now. Of course, of course, it's something we would look at um, in much more detail, um, just based on early field visits. There's about 15 feet out there for your lane, and then your parking lane. Um, so if you went to a 10, 10 foot lane, which is is a standard lane width, and it'll actually calm traffic, um, you could potentially get a five foot bike lane. Um, you then do have to you have that concern with cars going by park vehicles and things like that. People so people coming crossing the street where they're getting their coffee and donuts and they're crossing the street, they're running to the post office, of they're course. running to the hardware store, and they come in between cars. Yeah. And it's you you have to go slow, you're gonna hurt somebody. Yeah. So I, I just think I'm concerned about the bike lane. Yep, a full bike lane would be a, a challenge and something we would certainly um, evaluate further. Um, as an alternative, you can provide a, a shared lane, and you, it's a particular marking that goes in the road that just makes motorists aware that they're sharing the lane with bicyclists and vice versa. Um, but it's, it's another way to provide that um, feature that the state likes to see as part of these improvements. So um, the, the, the crosswalks, yes. um, we have existing crosswalks there today. Are any of those crosswalks going to allow us to have more parking spaces, or are they going to take parking spaces away? We would try to retain the existing crossings that are there today where the, okay. the vehicles aren't being, uh, where the vehicles aren't parking. Right. Um, so that's why I stress there'd be minor modifications at those crossings. And then as well as, <coughs> excuse me, other intersections um, at a place like at Water and Main. As you come uh, heading northbound on Main Street into downtown, it's very wide in that area. So two, alternate <coughs> two things we could look at is one, bring the curb lines in 
or you can barely see on that plan, there's a pedestrian refuge island that you could propose in the center there to provide a refuge for pedestrians to cross one lane at a time and then also <clears throat> kind of constrict that entrance into Main Street, provide some calming. Okay. Um, next one. Um, have you considered, because we've talked about this in the past and I mm -hmm. know it's, it's kind of a, a big goal, but we do have a river right nearby. Mm -hmm. And even behind on Saunders Street, there's also another waterway yeah. that we've always talked about opening that up so yeah. that restaurants overlooking the water or a small marina or is there any way we could incorporate any of that into this? Or is that just... No, well, uh, in the first phase, uh, not necessarily, but that's why we, we've created that kind of a wider vision. Uh, if you go back to... Um, yeah. go back to that one. This slide. This yeah, one, I yeah. saw a little bit of <coughs> right. it. Yep. So, so just to, to sort of talk about this briefly, and I know I've been yep. up to John and said, this is multiple phases. The grant uh, that, that Eric's speaking about today, my speaking about today, is uh, projected to cost of uh, the uh, up, up with between two and a half to three and a half million. Okay. Okay. And, and what the state and likes to see is get a water project. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. there's no commuter boat coming. Um, but but what the season a broader project as it con continues to be improved development along Main Street and onto the Mills area and the possibility of connecting back to Sutton. We we hear a lot of feedback from developers who would like to have us provide greater access to Sutton Street through other connecting it to downtown to improve the possibility of development there. We see is the Sutton Street piece. Uh, so looking immediately in the green area there and toward the yellow, we see is that that goes to highest and best value and there's improvement in that area. There'll be a natural progression toward the waterfront. Uh, Eric's actually walked the waterfront from down in this site back to Osgoode. Right. Um, um, I'm not sure what clothes you wore, but, but walked in that <laughs> direction. So uh, Eric has been a champion for trying to connect the waterway back to the business district, and I think there's some opportunity. There is also, just before you get to the um, to go on to 495 North, there is a big open green area that probably the state owns that. Yeah. I believe they do. DPW yeah. is working on that with mm -hmm. uh, Selectman Watson regarding some improvements down there with some yeah. private citizens and Terry Holland is involved. Yeah. We're also putting a gateway sign there. Um, yeah. Because yeah. Watson's been working toward making some of those steps to do that. We've gotten some um, agreement from the state, uh, the private transit company that operates the T, as well as the state that we can make some steps there and there. So we've cleaned up some, they're cleaning up some, and there's going to be a gateway sign placed there. Selkin Watson can probably speak to it better, but she's been working with the Director of Public Works and, and several others to, to improve that. Yeah, I was actually talking more to as a, as a location to maybe get out onto the water. Oh, so yeah. oh from an access point. Yeah. <coughs> when you, when hmm, you go by there, yeah. it's to the right, and it's a pretty big piece yeah, of Yeah, great idea. Yeah, off, off to the sort of left side in the middle of the screen, uh, where the it's arrow pretty is. pretty close to... Yeah. Just yeah. before you get on yeah, to the okay. highway, you'll see, you, when you go down. I think that is it. I mean, if it enhances the application, we certainly have an interest to look at the prospect of of, of mm -hmm. bringing in the waterfront. And, and that is one of the thinking forward, uh, enhancing both um, was it Sutton Pond and uh, Osgood Pond. Um, we know uh, RCG and the developers there really are interested in that. Uh, <coughs> you'll see that potential kind of access around the pond. We think that whole area is ripe for that and look for other programs to do that as well. Um, we like that and we haven't added everything on to this yet, uh, but you'll see the arrow and it re refers to the McGovern Transportation Center. Yeah. Uh, also, we, as you can see, we go a little further on, try and reconfigure the High Street, Sutton Street uh, intersection. That's it's still confusing to me each time I go to it. Um, Why it's called Elm and High. Altogether. But you know, it, it, this builds on getting from uh, uh, the McGovern Center to the airport to you know our downtown destination. Uh, the state has already vested invested heavily on that card, and we think this builds on that, and that's a good argument with the state. Uh, it's a next stone, a stepping stone. Uh, you know, uh, progressing into uh, the region. It's a nice regional touch, too. Um, so we are looking, uh, certainly, to access the Merrimack River. I'd love to access that river. Oh, I, we've all been talking about yeah. it. I've been talking about it for years, but it is expensive, and it does involve probably acquiring <coughs> private property in order to really mm -hmm. make it work, and that's the big 
Yeah. Yeah. You see the green space that you have. Yeah. You see it. It's, it's a pretty good sized space, yeah. and it's fairly yeah. flat. You can sort of see it to the arrow, just north of the <coughs> arrow. Yeah. yeah. Yep, that's a great point. Go back to that. Uh, yeah, go to that existing one. Um, this was a, a picture we took. Uh, this is Main Street um, heading south. You got Waverly just mm -hmm. over to the right there. Um, three things that really kind of stood out here. One is the abundance of those overhead utilities that you guys have downtown. Um, and with this, this project and, and fully reconstructing the road, it does provide that opportunity to, to bury them under Main Street. Um, the second thing that's captured here is you see the car heading towards us. Um, you've got a, a fairly wide lane there. Um, I did measure that lane. It is about 15 feet. Uh, so you could add an edge line there. To, to narrow that up a little bit and make it so motorists aren't so comfortable in that wider lane. The more comfortable motorists is, the faster they're going to drive within that lane. Um, and then the, the third thing is is it, it kind of captures the potential for a, a nice little um, gateway entrance into the downtown area. Um, and this last slide essentially shows that vision of um, you know multimodal uh, safety improvements that would support. Um, retaining and creating jobs, um, housing opportunities, and all located in the town center are, are three key elements um, that we're hopeful make this a, uh, a very strong candidate uh, for you guys. I don't see Slip and Suet's vehicle in front of the coffee shop. Is that purpose of the a little further back. <laughs> <laughs> We got rid of the manhole covers. Yeah. It's part of the brand. <laughs> I like that. That was a good catch. Uh, I mean, I, I love the look. No of it. I love the clean look of it without the, yeah. the, the wires. I, I also love the fact right that the Today View has the gray skies and the new view has the <laughs> I noticed that too. <laughs> 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 Saturated Market color. Very nice. I'm missing a flag on that light pole. Oh, jeez. <laughs> well, a reef. I'm missing a reef. Yeah, we did. We lost the flag. No, we need snow for the reef. Right. He told me to put it out. How far along the border do you see? eliminating the telephone poles and adding the heirloom lighting? Well, we separated from the grant because it's this sort of town piece versus the grant right. piece. Uh, we have approval to go from Merrimack Street down, down to Sutton Street um, as part of a previous vote by town meeting. Uh, okay. What we did was Ray and I came back to the board and indicated that now that the uh, uh, the old center project had been completed and paid for, before we were uh, we wanted to come back with a comprehensive Main Street corridor project before we asked the board to Start the process again in terms of the undergrounding, but but it's our perspective that if we're going to transform Main Street, um, we're going to need to. That's not going to be part of the grant. That's our sort of participation. Mm -hmm. That we're going to have to underground the wires, and and I would recommend since the approval exists to go as far back as Merrimack Street, uh, further up Main Street. We we do the whole uh, uh, kit and caboodle. We go from Merrimack Street further up Main Street all the way to Sutton Street, and I think it includes the first hundred or so feet on first and second. So you're going to underground well uh, all the way. Uh, First 100 feet in Waverly, you think? So from Sutton Street, really, all the way back to Merrimack, and about 100 feet down the, the major side streets, Waverly first, second. And we come back. We've got estimates, but you know, Ray can speak to his uh, experiences <coughs> and uh, whip marks from the process. Um, and we've gotten some rough Income. numbers I projected to the board. It's, uh, it was four million we got from Ingrid, but but until you start a process. You really don't know. The engineering starts, and they start to tell you what the number is. Um, but again, that's the, the the additional dollars added to the individual utility bills that have been ongoing now mm -hmm. for for a period of time. Right. Yeah. But I, I, we've talked to a couple of developers, Eric and I as well, major developers in town, and they indicate that they believe that with all these other improvements, that that really is the tipping point. Changing the visual landscape is essential to changing Main Street's perspective. Mm -hmm. That's for another meeting. <laughs> oh, that's a great update. I mean, really uh, encouraging and very, uh, very interesting concepts. So, uh, thank you for all those efforts. And uh, so, the grant, the application goes in the end of August, and then yep. when when will we know if there's been approval for that? Uh, yeah, October. October. Yeah, or, uh, October. Uh, that's pretty quick. Yeah, yeah and the then, last week um, of October. Yeah, great. So, should we plan on having you back um, sometime in, in that time frame? To, an update on the status of the grant? Yeah. On the final? Yeah, sure. That's right. yep. Absolutely. Is there Forward anything to. you need from us? Letters of support, letters from the citizens, contacting any of our officials? Is that we'll all do. part of what needs to be done? All of you? Yep. Yeah. Yes, yeah, we'll the support's we'll definitely very helpful. We'll call Joey. We'll call Joey. <laughs> I just 
reach out. Okay. Yep. Reach out. That's great. Thank, thank you right. very much. Thank, thank you. you. Mr. Chairman, can I plug you for one item that's coming up on your agenda? Um, <laughs> and it's uh, consent item F regarding uh, 2302 Turnpike Street. Um, and if you want, I'll stick around, but um, I was just wondering, that's a license agreement, uh, real quick, uh, for the development's um, earthworks, uh, redevelopment of that corner. This is something that uh, town council has signed off on. DPW, conservation, planning, have all signed off on. It's really, um, Sharpness Pond has a 150 foot wide right of way. Right. From well, way back days place? because of the missile, the, uh, the silo. Uh, the road's only 75 feet, so 75 feet goes in, and it seemed really ridiculous to have this nice development that's going in and um, have that 75-foot kind of gap. They, um, also, the runoff from Sutton Street, this is all to create a, what they call a rain garden to handle the runoff. You mean from uh, Turnpike Street? Um, no, no, this is from Sutton's. Sutton's. I mean, Shopman's Pond. Shopman's Pond. Oh, I was going to say Sutton. I'm sorry, I said Shopman's Pond. Long end of town. This is the project. Shopman's Pond. This is the project at the corner of Shopman's Pond Road and Turnpike. It's, it's right. a okay. big hole right now. So let's right. just take a step back. So you, you're asking us to uh, move this item up in the end? Uh, or or, or just, I wanted it. Uh, you, you're giving us an overview of it right now. Right. Um, I know there was a question of whether or not the attorney for the uh, applicant could be here. She was planning on coming. Um, frankly, I, I said if she could make it, that would be great. Uh, she's trying to get here, and I, I do know that. So if you want to wait, that's she, fine. She is supposedly coming if you want to talk to her. But um, if you have any questions on it, that's why I rarely ask. Yeah. Are there any questions about the license? So it's been approved by Town Council, the Conservation Commission, and the Planning Board. Okay. And they'll, uh, so they'll clear it, construct it, and they'll maintain it in Earthworks. Uh, but it's on, obviously, it's on our okay. right way. So um, I can certainly, since you're sitting there in the chair, I can certainly take this one out of order um, if you'd like. Um, we can take it out of order. Are there any questions or any comments from the board on this that they'd like further clarification on? Um, I have the, the license agreement here in my hand. I think everyone might How have is it going to look when it's finished? Yeah. Ring guidance can look pretty good. Um, is it? Yeah, the, um, I have the I have it. I afford it with electronic copy. I'll see if I can look at it. You know, it's kind of ornamental grasses and low yeah. yellow. Yeah, I think that whole corner is going to obviously be transformed. But, you know, yeah, it's been kind happy. of. Uh, I think they're going to do a great job. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm willing to take this out of order. If somebody would like to make a motion, move to take it out of order. Is that the well, motion you want? No, I'm already taking, I'm using my prerogative to take okay, that out of order. I mean, fine. make a motion for um, on what you'd like to do with this item. Approve. It's, or, it's at the very end, right? It's, uh, yeah, it's item uh, under F, uh, under consent items F, item F. Whatever. F. F. Selectman approve and sign the license agreement between the town of North Andover and Gill Family LLC as presented this evening. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second on this? I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Mr. Stewart, any further discussion on this? Uh, anybody? Any further discussion? <coughs> okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Tell to make it look much. nice. Eight. It is one of our gateways I think as they're well. Actually so. here, right? <laughs> That's right. Okay. It almost looks like a, a Japanese garden. Um, yeah. Do we need someone to Anybody want to see my, it? Um, jo Joyce, are you, can you notarize this? Or is this no, we'll take care of that. No, no, we'll take care of that. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to sign it. So witness me. Okay. No, it does. It looks like a, a beautiful Japanese garden. Oh, that's good. Okay, <clears throat> all right, thank you for that. So let's jump back into order. Um, so we'll move to consent items. We've already moved two of them. So we're gonna go back and we're going to uh, discuss the warrant for September 8th, the 2000, 2016 primary. Um, Grace? Mr. Chairman, I just need signatures from the board of selectmen so that we can have it posted. Okay. So we don't need a uh, motion on this one? Yes, you do. We need a motion, okay. If we could get a motion on this one. Let's move to adopt the warrant as presented by Madam Clerk. 
that good enough? Or? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So we'll sign that. Do we have multiple copies we need to sign? Yes. Or is yeah. Right here. Two copies coming around. So is this also copies or is this uh, we need to sign this too? So four copies altogether. Yeah, I'm sorry. Do you have some signatures number? I'm just listening to that. All right, so we'll, this may go on a couple times. Once it comes back. we're finishing that up um, the next under consent items is a request from Alex Coakley of the North Andover Athletic Association to use the streets in North Andover for the sixth annual nights on the run road race September <coughs> October 27 2016 um, do I have uh, let's see let me just take a quick look at this item we have um, Positive consent from the Division of Public Works, and I don't see. Police and fire all approved and no condition. Police and fire approved, no condition. Oh, yeah, that's right. I see that now. Mr. Chair, I move that the Board of Selectmen approve the request of the North Andover Athletic Association to use streets in North Andover for a 5K road race Saturday, October 27, 2016, beginning at 9 30 a.m. as presented. Second. So we have a motion and a second. Um, any discussion? There's nobody uh, here to speak to it, to advertise for it? No, this is always a very well attended event. Um, it raises money for a very good cause in North Andover Athletic Association. They usually get a good number of runners, and uh, it's usually a very fun event. They have a lot of vendors and everything else at the high school as well. So, um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Okay, next on the agenda is appointments to uh, some committees and boards in town. Um, the first on the list is Nadine and Ken Delano as the Poet Laureate. Um, and it looks like there will be a team this now. Um, where before we had uh, Kathy Klein as our, uh, Karen Klein, I'm sorry, as our Poet Laureate. Now we have a team. Um, so, anybody want to speak to this? I think it's great. Are you each going to take one year? Because it's a two-year term, is that how we're going to do it? No, well, I'm teasing. That's great. No, we, we thought maybe if we uh, if we did it, you know, he took two years and I took two years and he took two, we could keep it for eight years. There you go. There you go. But we just kidding. <laughs> no, it's fine. I, I That's think it's fine. fun. I mean, this is what it's all supposed to be. It's supposed to introduce poetry and make it fun, and and it's great. I think a team is terrific. They're I would great performance artists, and we haven't had performance art as a pair ever, ever. Wonderful. And I'd like to say that the uh, Poet Laureate Committee voted unanimously to put their name forward mm -hmm. to the Board of Select. Great. Um, we've been very pleased. They do community service right now on uh, Tuesdays every month. They have an open microphone at the Stevens Memorial Library. So they've been encouraging poetry in North Andover for several years now. And we're just delighted. Um, to have the opportunity to recognize their work and then to recommend them for uh, being the chair people for um, the town going forward uh, as poets look at. That's great. Right. I, th I think it's a testament to Karen Klein that we need two people to replace her. So, mm -hmm. who, who served us for four years as poet laureate um, with distinction. So, I'm excited, for, I'm actually excited that, that, that we have such an active group locally. Um, but thank you, Karen, because I know that you know you've been relentless in making this program the success that well, it is. I bug you all the time. About it. <laughs> and yeah. and every time I say I am not a poet, but I, I appreciate what you right, do. And right. you know we've seen events at the library where you have truly packed the entire is event. He so he's the, one he's the one that bugged. That's yeah. good. That's oh, yeah. she's pointing to Dick. No, yeah. she is not. <laughs> <laughs> but you are more than welcome to bug oh, me though, if you'd like to. Too. They're all very supportive. Yeah. Everybody's supportive. 
So. Even oh. the ones who aren't here. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true. Okay, okay, so do we have a motion for the appointment? Move approval of our uh, second. dynamic Move. duo um, poet laureate. A motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Aye. Okay. Thank you very much for your uh, upcoming service, and Karen, thank you for your uh, service these last few, so many years. Okay, and next up, uh, Christina Russell to the Youth and Recreation Council. Um, so, uh, Rosemary and myself, we had the chance to sit down with Christina several weeks ago. Um, absolutely motivated to get involved. She's um, newer to town, but as somebody who has a background with education, has a background with education. And so that plus being um, a mother of a younger child, uh, we thought that she would add you know, some great perspective, but also she had the, the enthusiasm and interest to see um, a vibrant youth and rec program in town. So, and I, I think I saw her in the back right over there. So oh. um, I don't defer to the chairman if you'd like to you know, put you in the hot seat to talk, you know, say anything, but she was, it, it was a great interview and a great conversation that we got to have with her. Um. So. Sure, you're more than welcome to introduce yourself if you want, or if you, or don't, if you don't have to, you don't want to, you don't you have to, that's fine. But, but um, we'd just like to thank you for stepping up and, and serving the town in this, in this capacity. We really appreciate all the citizens and everyone that steps up and does this from this board to every, every board and, and committee in town, so thank you. Um, so I'll have a motion. Move approval. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> New citizen in town, too. You're not here too yes, long. Thank you for uh, getting involved so quickly. Um, and next we have uh, Carrie Wahlberg on the Cultural Council and Sustainability Committee. So that's two different committees in, um, that they'll be, she, she will be uh, involved in. Yeah, Mr. Chair, she was very um, excited to serve and had a lot of energy and mm -hmm. was willing to take on two committees. And um, I think it's great. Um, so I would move approval for her as well. Okay, do we have a second? I second that. Is Carrie here tonight? No. No. So okay, she, well. she comes to us by way of California originally, and yes. so she brought a lot of, mm -hmm. um, she brought a really unique perspective, I thought, specifically to the sustainability committee, and I think that they'll be very happy. And we always toss members their way, and they seem, they seem thrilled to have the body, so. Okay. So I like her. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Next, we have Tracy Watson um, on to our Community Preservation Committee. Tracy is not here tonight. Um, Mr. Chairman, I suggest we hold this issue here. So we have a motion to table this until Selectman Watson is here. I would agree with that. I haven't, I haven't got the talk. I mean, I, the first I see him, this is in my packet. As I wanted to talk to her and see what's going on. I just. Okay, well that's fair. So you, there's a motion to put it, uh, table it for tonight. Yeah, Are you seconding that yeah, motion? Yeah, I'll second that. Okay, any discussion? Um, I think uh, given um, Selectman Stewart's um, intent to, to speak with her about this, um, we'll take a vote on it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed? Okay, so we'll table this one until Selectman Watson is available to be here. Uh, if she comes tonight, we can always. Well, the, the intention of that was not was to speak with her at a public meeting, or to you just wanted to speak to her about. Are we are we putting her in that in that role where she would come before us and then, if we don't typically want, require I, I, I our appointments. I want to talk to her and see where she, she was on this. I've had this. I've had comfort. I've had talked to people on certain things. I have to get some questions answered in this play. Okay. Right. Did this? How many how many votes do you need to put her on? Well, I just want to make sure that people know that you don't, it's not typically expected. It was more of a coincidence that some of the appointments were here this evening and we <coughs> offered that they wanted to come up, but typically it's not expected that an appointment, if anybody's interested in coming and, and joining a board, that you have to come and sit at you know, a meeting and be on TV. So I just, that's why I wanted the clarification that. You know, well, it sounds like Mrs. Stewart wants to talk to her about it. Yeah, so we've already voted. So we've voted to table this one. So we'll take this up at our next meeting um, on the 15th of, of August. So we've tabled it to the 15th. Um, next appointment is Joseph Lynch to the Conservation Commission. Um, I would move approval of Joe Lynch. Um, he's Second. a valuable member of that commission. And a veteran member of that commission. Tremendous amount of knowledge. So, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. <coughs> Next on the agenda, we have um, consent item for request of the North Andover Booster Club Little League 
for permission to install two scoreboards at Carl Thomas and to accept the donation of the scoreboards, which I believe is from. Um, Good evening, Mr. Chairman, fellow board members. You know who your friends are. Right. I'm just, you know. He's just got a free face. <laughs> I unfortunately do not have a PowerPoint presentation. That's all right. I know everything there is to know about installing one of those. Uh, <laughs> but if you could just introduce yeah. yourself for the yes. for the. Uh, I am Marty uh, Green, representing North End of a Booster Club in the league. I am the uh, fields coordinator. I've been a part of the league for about probably 14 years now. So these are typically the projects I handle. Uh, Ed Lynch is in the audience. He's a, a board member. He's responsible for. The uh, fundraising, we were able to secure the funds from Commonwealth Motors for these actual scoreboards. We played a major role in this. Um, I'll just start off by telling you what's there. Most of you probably already know that from the familiarity with the Carl Thomas Complex, but there are two existing scoreboards on the field. There is one in Carl Thomas Upper, which is the field that borders Dana Street in the office park. There's also one down in Carl Thomas Lower or Carl Thomas Two, which borders Mass Ave. The one up on Carl Thomas One, at one point before my time, did have lights, did have power to it. There is still power conduit to it, but that conduit was cut off at some time. There was a lighting control that was probably removed about 10 years ago. So there is, for all intents and purposes, there is no power to that school board at this time. Uh, the school board that's existing in Carl Thomas Lower has no power to it. That is just a, a manual scoreboard that's supported by a couple of six by six pressure treated timbers. The scoreboard up on Carl Thomas One is supported by four by four tube steel. It's in a concrete footing and it's about 15 feet high. What we're proposing here is to install two new scoreboards that will be roughly 15 foot nine inches tall. So very similar to the one that's up on Carl Thomas Upper. The location of the scoreboards would be pretty much the same. The only thing that may shift a little bit is for the solar panels. We did a cost comparison and to install new conduit and power to the existing score to the existing scoreboard location and a new one down at Cal Thomas was cost prohibitive. So we've gone an environmentally friendly way with solar powered scoreboards. So as you can see in the packet that was passed out to you, it'll have a sponsor sign for Commonwealth Motors on top of the scoreboard itself. So the scoreboard itself is roughly about 14 foot 6 inches high and you have the 21 inch advertising banner on top that brings you to about 15 foot 9. So that's what we propose. These scoreboards would operate by remote control and solar power. There'd be two solar panels on each scoreboard which would provide the power and there's one, I think it's an 80 amp hour battery that would be stored in a battery box that's attached to the uh, scoreboard pole. So really there's nothing to run down there in terms of conduit or anything like that. It's all localized construction. And what we're proposing to do is we're going to do that uh, with volunteer labor, which will be supervised under myself. So you're, are you talking about from the ground? It's like 14, 15 feet? Yes. Okay. So yeah. about as, maybe as tall as this inner ceiling here, maybe? Maybe a little yeah, tall. a little bit taller. Than that, yeah. yeah. In, Thank you for supervising that. I know you have a lot of experience in Sable. It'll also be under. Uh, it'll also be permitted by the, the town as well. I've already talked to Don about, about that, and uh, it'll be my construction supervisor's license that'll, that'll pull the permit. So we'll we'll go through the building permit application, and uh, I've got lots of access to equipment. So now, does this go dark when the kids are not playing? Yes. Okay. So the last thing we don't start an inning after 7:45. So. We're done by eight, quarter past eight at the latest, and that's only from April to pretty much the end of July, when the tournament, when the Susie tournament ends. That's pretty much it for the season. There is a fall league, but that's really only, only on Saturdays, so there should be no effect on on the abutters and neighbors in terms of lighting being an issue. I have to tell you, I don't think you heard me. This is the most comprehensive report that I've seen. I know how to build and install these big signs. <laughs> um, Wait till the next one I come in with the data uh, gap accessibility. Jumbo <laughs> I think it's very exciting. How exciting for the kids and what a lot of work for both of you. 
to raise the money and for you to this is this is a lot. If people saw how much work has gone into just there's this going plans. to be a lot of effort to construct it, but we'll get it done. That's great. That's fun. Okay. Um, well, it, it absolutely is comprehensive and all the more impressive when you consider that you know it's really you know an organization run by volunteers and will enhance I think our our children's athletic experiences. So it actually. Um, like the request of uh, Mr. Chairman through you and to the members that we waive the fees associated with this. Um, I motion that we waive the fees associated with this. I'll second that. Okay, so let's let's take the entire motion then. So we have to um, we have to also approve the installation of the school boards and accept the donation. Do we want to take those separately? Or so moved. So moved. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Second. So we we're we're moving the installation waiving of the building fees and accepting the donation from Commonwealth yes. all in one motion. Okay. Uh, You're actually accepting the donation from the Booster Club. Right. Oh, it's the Booster yeah. I'm sorry. Yes. From the Booster Club. Thank you. Does that, does that include dinner and drink? Or? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, so we have a motion. I'll, I'll, I'll buy you a hot dog at the stand. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? Ms. Green, let me just say again to you, thank you. You're one of those behind the scenes people that does so much for this town. And um, I don't know that a lot of people know or your face or, or know that you how much you do with, with respect to the field and keeping everything on track. So thank you for all you do. Thank you. Is, is, uh, that, is that scoreboard there now that one was there in 1950? Your name's still on it. It's gone. going in your backyard. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to hang you. Let's just say it was out of commission when I started doing it well, probably 15 years ago. You know that uniform you have from the 50s with the mustard stain on it? Yeah, that's it. I'll, I'll show it to you. <laughs> The, oh, yeah, all the, those the, the little ones. Aye. 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 Opposed? All set. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very both much. very much. And thank the committee. Thanks for, <laughs> for the club. You're welcome. You should get more sun. <laughs> oh, no. I've been at the beach for a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Next uh, on the agenda is the um, whether we will waive our right of first reviews, refusal for the affordable unit resale of 200 Chickering Road, Unit 107A, Kittredge Crossing. I have a motion. We, we have never. Yeah. The board has always taken the action of, the legal of refusing yeah. uh, the right of first refusal on the affordable units. Move, legal formality. Move that the board of selectmen decline the right of first refusal to purchase the affordable housing yeah, unit at 200 Chickering Road, Unit 107A, <laughs> also known as Kittredge Crossing. We second. have a motion and a second. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, next up, we're going to accept a donation from the Lowell Five Cent Savings Bank in the amount of $5,000 for the 4th of July fireworks display. Um, do we have anybody here from Lowell Five? And if we do, I apologize. I would have taken this a lot sooner. Um, no, we don't. So, do we have a motion? Uh, again, a very great uh, town partner, the Lowell Five Cent Savings Bank. They came into the town recently, and they've been nothing but a great partner to us. Mm -hmm. um, do we do we send them a thank you note? Yes, we do. Yes, yeah. we do. And we will. We'll you make send sure. a request for the money first, get the money. No, send, send the thank you note then first, and you get it faster. That's no, great. And what's no, the total cost really for the fireworks? About 10000 About 10000 10, No, just about about that. 10, each year it goes up, so this year it's probably about 11000 10, 10, 11, 11, 11, somewhere in that area. We had a big offset from the Friends of the Senior Center, too. They mm -hmm. donated a, a large chunk of money for the fireworks. And they were great this year, so. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Okay, so we have, uh, do we have a motion? Um, we'll let the board accept the donation of $5,000 from Lowell Five Cent Savings Bank to be used towards the 4th of July fireworks display. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, again, thank you to the Lowell Five Cent Savings Bank, and we will be sending out a thank you letter. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, okay, next on the agenda, request of surplus vehicles uh, and equipment from DPW. Uh, Mr. Manager, did you want to say anything on that? Yeah, this was a request made by DBW Director Bruce Thibodeau for a couple of pieces of equipment that are identified on the attached sheet. There's an 04 uh, trailblazer that has uh, certainly uh, served the town well. 1995 uh, Chevy piece of heavy equipment, actually vehicle 34. Uh, the Johnson Sweeper, as we proceed with purchasing a new sweeper. Um, 2005 Silverado, 2006 Ferris, which is a mower. We're replacing those mowers. And a 2008 Kubota motor as well, motor as well as we're upgrading those motors. And the 2008 is actually going to be going to the school department. Correct. So when we department. make this vote, that if we approve this, that will go to the school department. We start plus at the school that accepts the, the donation on the other side. Yeah. Okay. Move that the board of selectmen approve design of, uh, excuse me, um, 
Approve the request of DPW Director Bruce Thibodeau to surplus the equipment and vehicles as per his memorandum to the town manager dated July 13th, 2016. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion seconded. All those, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, uh, last under consent items, we have the um, new design of the DPW building, or, or the addition, I'm sorry, not the new design, the addition to the DPW building, um, uh, the DPW is looking for approval for this so that they can move forward there. I believe they have another meeting with the uh, planning board or the zoning board, one of the zoning board. Zoning board is the only one left. So they have another meeting with the zoning board and they would like uh, direction from this board bef um, with respect to that uh, project. So we've talked about this uh, a couple times. Um, we've discussed the, the paint, uh, the color in the picture that is presented to us is not <coughs> the actual color. That was just a present demo color. Um, Mr. Chairman, could I say something? You absolutely can. Um, we're being asked to approve this this project. Um, I, I mean, none of the selectmen were ever involved in this process. I feel uncomfortable approving something. I have no idea what's in that building. I, I think we should have, you know, I think we should have at least one liaison with selectman who's involved on, the, on these projects because, uh, you know, this is like a rubber stamp deal, you know. But I have no idea if there's something in there that I don't like, but it doesn't matter. I just We're just here to rubber stamp it. But, uh, I, I think going, going forward that we should have somebody from the board of selectmen. So when you say you're uncomfortable with what's going in, you mean the, the space in well, no, the space of the building? We're, we're approving this project, right? I have no idea what's in there. You know, I, I have no idea what's in there. It's like it's like, like like me pulling something out and say approve this. You don't know what's in this. I mean, I just, I, I know it. Tell you, I'm not, I'm not that real fussy about it, but I think we should have a little bit more input as far as what's going on on, on a lot of these projects, you know, or at least that one. One, one selectman who understands okay. what's going on. So we have, um, so that's a go forward strategy, right? Yeah. So is that, is that possible at this point, or? we're in. Oh. We're the executive board, of course it's possible. Yes, it is possible. Uh, at this point, we're in a, we're in a position um, where we've got a project that's in the works. Yeah. Um, I mean, this one's over now. I mean, it's no, you know, just, it just, just, just be funny that you, you go to approve something you don't really know. Well, what happened was at our last meeting, this was just put and say, okay, you guys got to do this because it's going before the other boards. And I think every single member was somewhat troubled by the fact that, what, what, are, you, what are you talking about? What do you mean? And then to find out that we don't have, and correct me if I'm wrong, but we were told that we don't even have enough paint money to cover the painting of the entire building. We can't fix the garage doors at this present time. But it's a $4 million project that the public and the Board of Selectmen should be made aware of and what's going on. We should, it, it's just troubling that that's how this was presented to us. It, and I, I was not at the last meeting, but if it was presented to you that the project, first of all, I, I think that's in fairness to both Mr. Stewart and Mr. Midale, the idea that you not, did not have access to the materials or there wasn't a level of communication that was going on in the facility, I think is not fair. It was not the first time it was brought up uh, in terms of the discussion of this building. We've worked for the same program now for four years. We, we have uh, working groups, typically the people who live and work in the building, helping decide what the interior is. Typically on the exterior facade, Town Hall being a great example. Uh, certainly the public's input because it's a historic town and a sort of uh, center of the community uh, that was more on the exterior, not on the individual makeup of the individual offices and who sat where, quite frankly. This is a functional building of the existing staff. Uh, the entire building is going to be painted. We've talked about that. This was, has always been as a programmatic item. For the five years we've been talking about the facility plan, this has always been about creating an office space which addresses the, the <coughs> existing weaknesses or deficiencies within a building where you have professional staff see, sitting in a building that was probably not designed for the professional staff. For, and not an air quality question, but in terms of if you've ever been in the DPW facility, it just lacks what you'd expect to walk into a professional space and allow folks to operate in a professional manner. This project was always about creating that space for them and making perimeter improvements to a building which is you know, old and tired. Uh, we've said and I've communicated other meetings that if you want a full brand new DPW facility, it's 30 million bucks. But that isn't the project that was ever presented either originally by the facility master plan before my arrival 
or since then, this has been a project about creating that professional space and making perimeter improvements because aesthetically it's, it's not great in the neighborhood in fairness, and we all recognize that. Um, as it relates to your involvement, um, I both understand your perspective and at the same time, I, I think the belief that this hasn't had been an inclusive process, it has, and it's been not unlike the other processes where staff and other members of the people that you pay every day to do the work of the town sit in a meeting and try to decide over multiple meetings with professionals how to arrange the office space. I mean, in fairness, I don't sit in some of those meetings because I'm not going to dictate to the DPW director, you need to sit here first there. Um, we let the staff and the engineers work on that to come up to something that creates the best workspace. I understand the exterior pieces and all the concerns, um, whether you like the building or the color, I, I get that piece. As it relates to this facility, does a particular selectman or a particular town manager add a value to what the office space should operate? Or is that more likely that the opinion and input of those people who work in that facility provide the proper perspective of how that works? You know, I, I agree with you in part, but not in total. This is still the people's building. And unlike what the discussion that we had at of the town hall and we looked at different renderings, this is the executive board. We should be at least informed along the way. This is what they're doing. Just let us know. I agree with you. I don't I really don't desire and it's a utility building. I do not have the knowledge of where we park all our heavy equipment, the type of rubber flooring or whatever it is that's involved. I don't have that. But it's just being kept informed. So at the end of a meeting, this is what we're doing on the DPW, but it's but also too, I, I don't think it's too much to ask to at least have a citizen um, that's not a town employee just sitting in who might have some expertise in this area. I don't think our town employees should be designing all of our buildings without at least letting the executive board know how's it going, what our thoughts are, how money wise are we you know, under budget, over budget, are there shortcomings because we don't have enough money? It's just keeping us informed, Andrew. Okay. This board, and I think I can speak for the entire board because every single person went, what, what? Well, I prefer to hear from each of you because that's not what I'm hearing individually. So if that's the case the individual board, I, I think that the level of communication. If you watch the general, meeting. I, and I didn't have the benefit of that, but I also I think you can, I think but, you but I can see, I think, let I, me finish, please. Well, that that you, I, think, I think you can see that there was a little bit of Wow, where did this come from? I, I want to, I did not empower any selectman to speak on my behalf. This is, I, I said this to Ray after the meeting, that was not, I don't know why people said that was the first time they saw this, because it wasn't my first time at a public meeting seeing this. It was earlier this winter. This, this same photo was in a packet that we had. I'm going to be frank, and I, I've had conversations with people in the public, because it's a DPW building. You've already laid it out. You've laid it out as well, that it's, it's, it's not on Main Street. It's not a historic building. I mean... Do I think it could be prettier? Yes, but my definition of pretty, as we learned during the debate about the exterior of Town Hall, is different from the four, my four colleagues, as are their opinions from the other four. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to weigh in on paint color. I appreciate, I, I think Ray did actually a really good job of explaining how we have $4 million to work with to bring this building up to a level that allows our professional staff to act as professional staff and deliver the best services to our residents. Um, I do think that we as a board collectively, so I guess I, would, I, I don't disagree with the sentiment. I agree with Slackman Stewart's sentiments, but not with how he would deliver them. I think that, yeah, if, if it could be brought to the board more regularly, that would be helpful. But it, I wasn't surprised that this was a project happening, and it wasn't a new picture to me. I mean, it was brought to us. I mean, I might be wrong with the date, but January, February, this was a photo that was given to us. Um, I don't know that I expected you. I mean, I, I, I don't know that I expected the same type of input that we had with the sit with, with North Andover Town Hall, but then again, I mean, I didn't ask about that. And clearly it's something that does matter to, you know, to some colleagues and future boards of selectmen may want that type of input. So, um, I mean, I don't know if that was in our budget, though, to get multiple designs. I mean, that's, that's, that's not something I remember discussing last week. Well, certainly what I would say is this, that um, I will take the responsibility as it relates to all of the projects that we are doing. And I do think, and I can go back and show you 50 to 150 emails and other communications about the facility master plan, including town meeting presentations and everything else. This has not been a process that has not been inclusive, period, in my opinion. 
But that being said, I can say as it relates to this project, and Ray can probably confirm my position on it, I viewed this as a utilitarian addition, some kind of quasi perfunctory oh my God, look at the building, it needs to be improved. And I didn't, I certainly didn't uh, raise it to the same level as, uh, not even near the same level as Town Hall, for yeah, example, yeah. I or even this building to an example. Because from our perspective, uh, we have regularly since for the last five years communicated that what four million ish gets you in this particular case isn't the kind of transformative uh, improvements that you see at Town Hall or the creation of this building. It really was about creating a proper work environment. I know it's a public building, but it, it, in fairness, it doesn't get the same throughput in activity. It's not a place we're going to bring one of these meetings It's to. not the library or town or hall or things. the school. So, I agree so, with so you. So I would agree, to, to, certainly to the extent that that we, including myself, went into this project as viewing it as a little more routine. Um, but it wasn't the first time you saw these photos. No, I agree with and, you well, on but, that. But, but I felt that that was communicated. So I want to be clear about that. It wasn't the first time. But we certainly entered this as, as more of a uh, almost something that wasn't in the plan, just something that we were doing as part of a capital project. And so from that perspective, having the functional staff make those decisions, I, I with no disrespect to the remarkably intelligent members of our community or to the same to the Board of Selectmen, the folks who live and work in this kind of building, um, they do represent the folks who, who should be driving uh, those kinds of decisions. As it relates to the aesthetic appeal, I think that the architect, quite frankly, was limited. Look to the building to the left and the building to the right. And we both recognize that's not a criticism of those buildings, but they are straight line buildings of metal construction. One has a little bit of stone, one's just red. Um, and, and to a certain extent, I, I don't blame the architect at all, and I, or the group for coming back with the structure, which largely is consistent with the other two buildings left and right of the facility. So I, I do think we approach this project a little differently. Uh, I, I certainly say that, and if that left the impression of exclusion or being left out, okay. Well, I, I think, but I don't think so that that's I think, Can I weigh in here too? Though? Go, yeah, go I have a chance to weigh in here. So what I would say is, yes, the last meeting we saw this, the, the drawings, there were some questions about the color. There were some questions about the location on the, the plot where it was going to sit. Um, so I think they, those questions were answered at the last meeting. The color, um, we understood then this was just a picture. Uh, we understood now where the, where the building is going to sit on the, on the property. Uh, I think going forward, we used to have um, a, a frequent update from Ray on the, uh, on the building plan, on the capital plan. I think going forward, I'd like to put that as, a, as a, an agenda item, uh, maybe under the town manager report, mm -hmm. just so we get that regular update so we don't uh, feel that we're, you know, we're, we're blindsided by something like this, so we can have that regular update. And um, so, and just on every project that's ongoing, I think that was a good update that we used to get from Ray, and I think that would be something that I'd like to put back under the I town agree. manager's report, just so we can have that regular update and make sure we're communicating and, and understanding and, and during, during what's the happening. During the construction of this building, too, I appreciate the tour by Ray through the building to see how it's coming. It gives a better idea of what right. you know, when this is being built. But, but, I, with, but with all, yeah. the, again, I, I'm yeah, going to be yeah. a little defensive here, Mr. Yeah. Stewart. What was said left, left, in my opinion, the wrong impression, and I don't want it to be left that way. No. This board has been communicated with, at, at, in my opinion, um, at least an acceptable level, if not above, around what is $25 million a project. It has been the most spoken about series of activities short of our ex effort toward the bond rating during my entire tenure. So as it relates to this one, I, I will accept the fact that we approach it in a completely different way. We just didn't view the buildings. I mean, that's, well, if that's a fault, that's a fault. Um, and I think it's a fair point to bring up regular capital improvements. It was more of an up update rather than a complete. Right. Right. But as it relates to uh, the, the sort of look of the project, what was designed, I think Ray articulated this as he communicated to me, and I'm sure he did. This was a remarkably limited site in which what you see in front of you is what's left on the site. This wasn't options and choices here. Uh, you had to fix a box of several thousand square feet on a site and meet conservation restrictions setbacks on the zoning requirements, lot coverage requirements. And so the architect had a rather challenging job as did the committee. Uh, but, I, but I think overall, I, I, I will take exception if the belief is that I do not communicate effectively. I'm just going to leave it like that. If it's about this project, I'll take the hit. Uh, if it's a broader comment, I won't. Everyone else? Yeah. Uh, I'm 
um, so that we've, we've agreed so that it would be all projects, not just this. I, I mean, we also have a big fields projects going on that um, I would like some And I gave on. an update to the fields project. We have, we don't, I, again, I will give you any information you want. I just, but there's got to be reasonable expectation of where we sit. So the, the fields project doesn't really exist today. It's a 50, we, we spend on an annual basis, we put in about 20 capital project requests, plus that's a CPC request, and another seven or eight, nine CPC requests. Do you want updates at every meeting on 17 projects? No, I, I would think anything that, you know, a, a brief update, anything that's ongoing, Town Hall, let's have an yep. update on Town Hall. Yep. Anything that's coming up um, in the next, I don't know, two, three months maybe? And of what nature? Uh, equipment purchases as well as facility I don't think there's I any harm in just letting no, us No, no, I'm just trying to, I want to make sure that my, we give My thought was around building projects. Building projects. Uh, and, and, and fields, any construction. Well, yeah, the, the anything we project, put a shovel in the ground. Well, the big project that's going on at the middle school, I'm actually hearing from neighbors what's going on there. But, so right. that's that's the kind of thing that it's, it's nice to, to know what's going on so we can actually Except in that particular case, the neighbors are talking about something that has nothing to do with that project. There was a survey done as a function of, of a completely different project in which the neighbors were, were communicated with as if called. There was surveys associated with the work, for instance, the Complete Streets Project, excuse me, Safe Routes to School Safe Project. Yeah, yeah. The Safe Routes to School Project was communicated to you on multiple basis, and some of the activity of that group has left the neighbors the impression something is imminent in the middle school, and it's just not. Um, and so, I, as it relates to the middle school project, I have given this board an update relative to the middle school project in the form of both an email and a communication. But I think it's we should have it in an open meeting so we can at least talk and ask questions. I agree, but we're, we're just we're at the point that there is there is no middle school project other than a CPC application and dollars to fund an initial study. What's going to happen next as it relates to that project? And again, I think under the ask the manager piece, if there are pieces left hanging from the board that you feel like we haven't communicated you want to bring to the public, Absolutely. we haven't included, exactly. challenge me at those sessions. I, I am, I'm just here to answer whatever questions in the public setting you'd like. As it relates to that project, there, there really is there's nothing to report other than the fact that in the next couple of months, and I've said this at a meeting not so long ago, the committee will come back with a recommendation to form a broader committee and then it gets handed off, which I think the selectmen will be the appointing authority. It doesn't, there's no specific appointing authority, but I would recommend it's the selectmen. Appoint a committee of 11 to 13, which will implement this fairly large middle school project. Uh, what we were charged with was getting enough dollars to give a rough idea of what the project could look like in scope. I have communicated that board in a public meeting and in the form of email. And then when that's done, that sort of preliminary, very preliminary phase, then someone's going to have to carry the ball because, as I've said in public meetings, that's between three and seven or eight million dollars worth of work that's transformative to that area. And when that happens, that'll get turned over to the board to appoint a committee of an uh, implementation committee and put the right people on it to make sure that they continue to ask for the funding necessary to do it. And because it's that significant a project, I think um, I, yeah, it's been communicated. I, 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 what? I think I, I hear what you're saying. I think what happens though is sometimes that we talk about these, these big projects and these capital projects and we listen and it's not, I'm not going to disagree with you that you haven't talked about this project, but then time goes by and all of a sudden it's there, it's just, just giving us the update. Yeah. 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 And, that's, and that's why so I think, I think we we're both saying the same thing. Yeah. Your feelings are, gee, I did my job, why are you saying that? And we're saying, yeah, we get that, but gee, this has come up recently, can we... That's all. Just keep us. And, and I think that's why putting it on a regular agenda item, even if Ray, if you get you say, I've got no update this meeting, that's fine. But and then maybe we can say, well, what about this? What about we that? We used to do it the first meeting of the month. We can do the same thing. Yeah. Okay. I, I just think we haven't done it in a while. Just want to so make right. sure that we're so we'll talk yep. about the facility plan primarily, because right. the fields thing is some of these things have now just we separate them, but uh, we'll make sure we're combined on whatever. Yeah, I think I think we did major projects like for instance, if we're once we start the. Uh, okay. My mind just blanked out. That's very good. The, the Schofield Mill project, that would be one of the projects we'd include because that's considered a major project. It's just, yeah, whatever's going on in town so that when we get the call, we can at least say, hey, oh, yeah, this is blah, 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 or make a phone call and say, you know, Andrew, what, what's, what's going on on this street? And the one. assistance I would ask is this, from your perspective. Um, we try to share. We communicate reasonably well. And there are times that because of day-to-day -day stuff, mm -hmm. we don't often stop. Uh, sometimes don't stop and forget that you have day-to-day -day life still. And there you go, stuff. exactly. And so it is, it is okay whether in this setting or in another way you say, 
and sometimes you do. But, you know, um, geez, I forget where we are in this project. So we're more than happy to do the regular reminder. I think there's a lot of merit in that. It also helps us sometimes if, if you get the call that, the, that you feel free to email, call, whatever it takes, or bring up in this setting uh, things that maybe we gave you. I'll never sit there and say, I already gave you that. I'm more than happy to answer again. But we make the assumption that when I send something once, I assume everybody has read thoroughly everything I've sent, which isn't fair. Um, stem discern. And I, we could also use that kind of feedback if you feel That's like you need it. Perfect. Do you agree? Very good. So what do you think of gold building on? Um, I really don't gold? care for the gold. I was really hoping for more brick or taupe or something, our colors that we, we seem to have in a building like this, in town hall, Who's in our fire to station. Wash the windows? Holy cow. The you, but we don't you, need to make that fireman. decision today, right? You had that same question. I was going to say, you really had that same question on the fire station. Sure the windows are clean. I think it's, architecturally. Yeah. When does it need to be made? I think we're gonna, we have to wait for the, the, so the color palettes vary by the selected contractor. So you should stop to, I think it would be helpful to, to get, you're looking at what- No, you brought the color palette with you. <laughs> well, we, we gave it out to you last time, but right. I brought so extra copies again this time. time. But I, I, in general, because if we do that in the middle of after contract is time, it gets a little rugged, right? So what I'd suggest is, if you have a preference to be someplace, like in the red, mm -hmm. like just take a few minutes to sort of give us some direction that way. And then we can start showing these images closer to that color. Mm -hmm. And what we're really talking about is, uh, so they may vary slightly because a particular contractor um, uses a slightly different, yeah. you know, like two paints, one made by there, one made by whatever it is. Uh, so if you could give us some direction on the design and a general sense of color, understanding that uh, they may be slightly different, that would be helpful. Then we'll stop showing the gold image. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like the brick red. So do I. I think I like the brick red, maybe have the window trims a different color, like a dark green, uh, which I know sounds like Christmas, but it's actually a very... Are those stainless thing. right now, right? I'm sorry? Are stainless or aluminum? Well, that's the front. The front page is the material that's going to be the building. The front page that I this just is the, That is the material. Right. Or like the, the fire station, there's what, taupe and a brick color. Uh, I just saw a building up in um, well, remember, Kenny uh, Bunkport, Maine, that was a new, and it was it was taupe, and it was a brick red, and they literally had the window panes in a very dark green. It was very pleasing palette of colors. Just so there's no misunderstanding, remember, we cannot do brick. We can no, do I know. Brick red color. Right. Exactly. Not, right. Right. not right. fire engine so I'm, red, I'm not orangey at. red. It's we're looking at the first one again. Yeah. Great, can you find the color? Right. Would, Somewhere would around have the lowest BBR energy right. cost. <laughs> right. That's no, what I assume. The building heating That's up. what I'm People actually do yeah, no. there is a JLR yeah. or a BBR. Right. Again, until, I agree. until the general contractor is Those ones in the middle. I, like, I think product, I like the BBR, but yeah, then like the BBR. we'll know okay. specific color. Charts. Unless it's too red. Uh, it's hard to tell on a piece of paper. I believe it's a printed piece. And this was. This color here was another part of the body of the building that well, I saw. It, if you're going to go to reds, typically what you do, since we're going to get on colors, what you typically want to do is you look at the adjoining buildings, both left and right. Then most of the soffit material, that aluminum, which currently is a brown to a, and I'm somewhat colorblind, so uh, that brown to sort of the tan color in between, the gold here, you, you're, you're not going to do a strong contrast in color on that perimeter soffit area. It's going to likely be a white. Because you don't want to get into the... What do you mean by this? Uh, this top, the top area on your in your packages, that the top surround area. There's, there's really three different colors. There's, there's it's color like a brownish building, color. This, well, right, there's color the color around. of the building. There's the trim around the windows, and then there's that top right. soffit that, That's as soft. you said, we're referring we do to not as brown. Control. Is that what you're just saying? No, I'm just saying generally, if you're going to go, so this was made. Well, we'll here's what we'll do. We'll take the red as a general sort of gist, and when a contractor, specific contractor, is hired. We'll look to see how they match red, uh, match red with the other two surfaces that have to be covered. Okay. Okay. It yeah. may be sometimes when you go with red. I'm just leading off that sometimes when you go with the red, that the top soffit area sometimes commonly is white when you're dealing with red because they don't want to go red green or red something that, that sort of jumps out. We want this building to generally blend back off the street right. a little bit and, and not show the dirt. I mean, the type of equipment going in and out of there. No. Well, well, this is the point. It was few doors down, we have the first Postmaster General of the United States' is house, a historic right. building. But but to the left, we have an auto body stop in good shape that is red. I to know. the right, we have a metal shed building That's that right. is red. And across the street, we have a 1970s construction that, that wasn't period at the time. It's beautiful. I mean, I like it there. And the condo uh, and structure. Fun. But it's all um, 
a sort of tan, uniform tan structure in, in traditional late 60s, early 70s construction. So we have to sort of look at this industrial, and I think you get that. I um, do get it. And I so we'll try to, but we'll, we'll move toward the reds. And, and with all due respect, and just for the, you know, that building you referred to happens to be this color. Which one? This yellowish mustard oh, the color. Postmaster the, the old Postmaster house. Postmaster house happens to be this color. No, what I'm just saying is we just don't want this contemporary big garage type looking building a but few doors away. I know, but you can still try to tone it down with the right, right. color. We just can't create, we can't create colonial roof lines, that's all. No. You, and I understand the building next door is a butler building, which for those at home, that's a big metal it's building. Shed. Yeah. <laughs> a big metal and it shed. used to be our town hall <laughs> for a little while, and they were great people own it, and they take good care of it and all of that. So, so um, we would look for consent, other than the concept of right here, to proceed. At this point, we've got planning and conservation approval. Uh, the ZBA was, was largely commenting on parking, uh, raise work to address the parking issue so that it's no longer looking for any relief on parking. Parking's been satisfied. Uh, but certainly it makes sense to go into that August 9th meeting with agreement by the selectmen that other than the color, uh, the look will, will be this. Okay. And we'll try to change the, the prints of these that are mustard. All right, Olden's. so do we have a motion then? Um, I'll move approval of this design pending uh, the board and others picking the, the color combination. And Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Are we getting the garage doors painted or what? <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 we are doing Or is it going to be done in phases? I, I have well, no problem with phases if that's what it requires. That was 10 years younger. So, so in terms of establishing, what well, we're still on the topic, but still in terms of establishing priorities, so we talked first about uh, three primary priorities, right, as relates to this project. One was creating the space we talked about. We spent some mm -hmm. time on that. Uh, two was to provide um, a salt shed, which really allowed us to meet the immediate demands. And three, and this isn't probably a misorder, because number two really, the charge in number two was clean the damn site up. So beyond the aesthetics from the street, I, I think we all would agree that the general site condition is not ideal. I agree. And so uh, phase three here was to take some steps to make sure that the overall site, um, even when you went back from the curb, was a better. The, the, the way things appear. And when you get to the back of the building, it's complicated. But to clean up the site and take some steps, and Bruce has already begun to do that. Um, and then everything is sort of additional to that. So we're going to paint the exterior to match this facade, whatever color that turns out to be. And then we have other priorities that are below that. There's some um, structural pieces to this that we had to address, make sure that the building can last longer. Um, the building, uh, the, the doors will either be painted or replaced, probably not replaced. But as part of the exterior painting, paint the doors. Uh, there's two. Um, uh, eave type structures over the two side entry doors that are sort of old wood things that we want to replace. Those may be with aluminum or some other structure. So we're trying to make the building on the most visible sides, front and left from the street, uh, aesthetically improved. Uh, when you get to the back of the building and the stream side, uh, we're less sensitive to that. I'm trying to squeeze every dollar out to do that. I know, but will those eventually get done? Uh, the, the doors may not eventually be replaced because they operate. They're functional. Well, that's yeah. fine. Then yeah, just yeah. clean them no, up. No, they're functional. Yeah, of course. No, we're not. We. It's the kind of project we, where, given the cost of this kind of structure, we're not replacing things that don't need to be. We want to make sure that the building stands look aesthetically more pleasing, the sites improve, and we address the soft issue. Okay. Yep. Fair enough. But you know me to be uh, largely OCD. And you talk very fast. I do. And I think you, you forget want, so that you say all this stuff in one, and then we're taking it in, and then we don't talk about it for months. And you know right. that I say We can help each other remind that. <laughs> all right, so we're going to move on to licensing. Uh, we've beat this course pretty badly. He's limping. We're going to move to licensing. Uh, do we have a motion to move into licensing? Mr. Chairman, move to, uh, move to enter um, licensing. Second. Right. I have a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So, your first role as licensing chair. Yes, exciting. Big night. So, we have on the agenda this evening two requests. The first is a request of Armand Jugnavorian of St. Gregory Armenian Church for a one day malt and wine, li li wine and malt license for the annual church picnic, which is scheduled for Sunday, September 11th from noon until 6 p.m. Um, I don't know if Armin is in the audience. No, I don't see anyone. It happens all the time. We'll it does. Um, second. It seems he has everything in order. Um, uh, motion of Mr. Stewart, seconded by Selectman Spadili. Um, 
All in favor? Aye. 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 All well, opposed? None. Motion to open public hearing. Do I have a second? Uh, motion by Selectman Stewart, seconded by Selectman Smedili to enter a public hearing. Um, uh, this evening we have Hokkaido before us, Hokkaido restaurant on um, Route 125. Um, the public hearing has been opened. Um, just to clarify, only the board members, town council, and the license holder um, will be asking questions at this time. Um, so I will read the notice. laughs at me for the delay in opening it. You don't have well, I, I have I have paper and watch. Um so uh Selectman Valancourt acting as chairman of the licensing commission sent a letter to uh, Mr. Yang Wan Ning, um, manager of Hokkaido Restaurant at 1250 Osgood Street, um, dated June 17th, 2016. Um, the North Andover Licensing Commission hereby notifies you, Mr. Ning, and requests you to be present at a public hearing to be held on Monday, July 18th, which is this evening, at the North Andover School Admin Building regarding an alleged violation of a restaurant license issued under Section 12 of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 138, uh, to your restaurant, Hokkaido Restaurant. Uh, this violation relates to the alleged incident described in the attached incident report, which occurred at your establishment on June 12, 2016, at approximately 1.47 a.m. As stated in the report, the violation is pursuant to the Town of North Andover Alcoholic Beverage Regulation, Section B. Four hours of operation with states. Last call shall be at least one half hour prior to the licensee's closing hour, and all patrons must be off the premise. By the closing hour, all tables and bars must be cleared of all glasses, bottles, and containers of alcoholic beverages with one half hour after, within one half hour after closing hour. Um, at this hearing, you have been given the right to have counsel present, uh, may have witnesses testify on your behalf, and will be entitled to question witnesses as well. As a result of testimony to be given that night, the actions of the commission uh, could result in a warning, suspension, revocation, or modification of your license. Um, uh, I'd like to first recognize um, Sergeant Susie, who I believe was the investigating sorry, officer. Sorry, Sergeant Stoudy, I'm sorry, Sergeant Stoudy, sorry, Sergeant Stoudy um, who was the officer who responded that evening. Um, I'd like to invite him up uh, to be read the oath. Um, the oath. Um, uh, have, have we already sworn all of the individuals in? No. I'm no. We, we, no. Do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing about the truth, so I don't do that? I do. Um, I mean, it seems fairly straightforward, but I guess an explanation of what happened that evening is, is probably good coming straight from you. It was on um, June 12th at about 1.47 a.m. I was driving up 125 North near Hokkaido, um, and I noticed a, a large amount of vehicles on the property, uh, I, which is unusual that time of night because usually it's closed up, the lights are off, and the lights are on the bar, right? went into the restaurant to the front door, which was open. And I spoke with the gentleman at the front desk and I looked at the bar and there's maybe 10, 12 people sitting at the bar with various drinks, including beer, and asked him, you know, he's supposed to be closed by one. And his answer was, well, we had last call at 11.30 and I reminded him that I was there earlier for a liquor check at, uh, at approximately, just a little bit after midnight. And so no, I meant 12.30, is what means they usually close at 1. So it was some 45 minutes later after closing that they were still um, you know, operating the bar. Ten to, so you said a lot, 10 to 12 pa patrons? 10 or? to 12 patrons, patrons correct. Um, what happens? Can you, can you detail what, what the, in that instance? Is it just you cleared out the, the bar at that point? And right. You, yeah, 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 you just, you know, you're supposed to be closed. Everything's supposed to be off the bar. All the employees are supposed to be off the property. And um, he tended to that. This doesn't happen all the time, does it? Just this no, one time? No, no. And just to be clear, so the actual closing time is 1 a.m., so last call should have been 12.30. Is that right. what you're saying? Right. Yeah. And they were there at 2 until 2. And by 1 o'clock, that's it. Yeah, everyone, everyone should be going in unless, you know, unless they're cleaning or preparing for the next day. The table should be cleared. The bar should be cleared. And it should be gone. And the door locked. And the door locked. Was the door not locked when you no, entered? No, no, right no. no. Were, were there any employees who were I restaurants? I, two employees, the bartender and... and no, that, but that, I mean, who were sitting there having... 
I drink I, I don't. Now. I don't know that, ma'am. Yeah, any additional questions for Sergeant Stoudy? So you do you you do this route often. So when um, Selectman Stewart asked you, so this is not a regular occurrence. Will you two be in here before? Two o'clock in the morning, you always look for someone to talk to. So this <laughs> usually no one around. No, usually it's not. It's not a final occurrence. That's why I went out and checked. So when you drive by on other occasions, is it it's the normal cool. hours? They're closed. Yes. Doors. Yes. Do you do door checks? Anyway? Yes, yes. Well, Even not, if it's not necessarily every night, but you know. Yeah, if the building looks like they've well, closed, you'll still go over and. Randomly check buildings, check town yeah. hall, check this building. No, I, I know they checked town hall. But, but in this case, you saw a number of cars in number the park. A number of cars, lights, looks like they're open for business, and, right. and normally they're closed. So that prompted you, I'm correct. correct. Yeah, correct. Appreciate that. Yeah. And what was the response of the manager on site? Was there a manager on site? It was, um, yes, there was a manager on site and just didn't seem to find it to be a big deal. And he told him it was supposed to be closed and then he went and immediately went and had everyone come out of the, uh, out of the bar. And then I checked back by about 10 minutes later and everybody was gone and the lights were off. Mm -hmm. Well, seeing, seeing it's a first offense, I think the uh, a warning would be a way to go, and, and let them let them know that uh, the next time's a week to 15 days. Do we do we have any other any other witnesses on behalf of the town here? Yeah, as well, before we do that, yeah, we should. There, we, that, yeah, we have to close the yeah, hearing. We'll close we'll the hearing. You want to give the uh, the individuals the option if they, they want to stipulate to the facts. Yes. Thank you. Um, thank you, sir. Thanks, um, I'd like to. I not, don't assume there are any other witnesses on behalf of the town, so I'd like to move, give the opportunity to the license holder, um, if if he or she is present. Um, I mean, I, I don't know if there's anybody here from Hokkaido who, yeah. either the bartenders are, if you m wouldn't mind stepping forward and the town clerk can redo your oath, give you your oath. Okay. Can you just raise your right hand, just do you do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing about the truth? Or, or? Okay, be seated, please. Um, so, would you both mind introducing yourselves? Uh, I'm the, uh, the bar manager at Hokkaido Restaurant, and I was on duty and the, the night that happened. And um, here we have uh, Mr. Lee, he's the owner of the, uh, the Hokkaido Restaurant. And you both heard the reading of the notice, and of course received yes, the notice you're here yeah. this evening. Um, I know that the uh, Sergeant Stoudy has presented a report as well as, yes, as this do. evening. Do you dispute any of the facts that no. he's presented? No. No dispute? I mean, it's my fault that I like, uh, let that happen. Like, you know, I just wasn't aware of the time on that night like, that happening. Like, it was so late, you know. So, you know, as soon as he stepped in, like, he approached the owner and telling, like, everybody should be out at the time. So, you know, it's, you know, we, as most of the people uh, left at the time. Mm -hmm. um, How long have you been in business up there now? Uh, three, 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 years. Uh, three, three years. Whoa. Three years. Without any, as we've heard, without any. And, and obviously history. you remember the history because we talked to you when you came in here at first and the history of that building before that and the number of violations. But I know that has nothing to do with you, but it, um, you know. No, I wasn't aware at the time. Like, mm -hmm. I was hired like a few months after they were open. So, yeah. okay. But you're aware of what time you're, that, that you are supposed to call last call <coughs> at 1230? Yes, yes. And, we, you know, since then, like, we visited the, uh, the, uh, the violations, so I've been keeping uh, most of the people, like, out like right before one fifteen, like you know, sometimes what happened is uh, after after last call, like at one o'clock, you know, we give up water to people, like you know, who want to. But, you know, but time take, out. Take, last take call has to be twelve thirty. Yes, exactly. And you yeah. can't. Do last don't, call. You're saying you, you're you're asking people to leave by one fifteen. By your license, you need to be closed up at one o'clock. They need to be gone. Uh, gone. Well, so there, there was a couple of issues that happened in my bar. I need to uh, probably let you guys know that, like, the taxi service in the area is 
so slow that like we have people take, waiting for taxi, uh, we have people waiting for ride, you know, like after hour. I mean, sometimes we we'll even call taxi for people like at twelve thirty. I mean, if they show up like twenty five minutes later, that's a very good sign. Most of the time, it takes forty. 45 minutes or even over an hour. So, well, so then respect, then, can I? Then you need to call it an hour early. Yeah. Yeah. No, but we call when the customer approaching to us, like at last call, that, oh, I need a ride, can you call a taxi for us, you know, stuff like that. But, but the thing is, they still have to be gone. So that yes. you need to make an announcement earlier for last call. Those of you who will be calling a taxi, this building will be closed at 1 o'clock. Yes, you cannot I will do that sit in the future. Like, Sometimes I let, when, when we're doing the cleanup, and so I let them sit around and wait for the ride to, to come. But there's a, I mean, you're telling us right now that this is a regular occurrence, that this is something where, happen. you know, yeah, you're, like, you're as, as a, as a so from now on, I would tell them to, you know, if they want to wait, they have to wait outside or, you know. Or do last call earlier. Do. Yeah. Do, yes. I mean, if you need that extra time to get rides mm -hmm. there, then maybe your last call should be 12 o'clock. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And so that way you've got everybody out the door by one. Well, next time, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll do a better job on that part. Yeah, mm -hmm. we, you have to. You yeah, have that's to. Not really yeah. I, I've been trying um, to make progress, you know, yeah. in, in my PF. You have to. It's, yeah. It can't be a try thing anymore. You yeah, have to. You it's, it's, it's the law. Okay. It's your. It's your license. Is states. See if you come yeah. back again and say, well, they, you know, they didn't have their rod. I had to leave them there. That's not going to bode well for you. You will probably. We will probably vote to shut you down for at least a few days. I mean, Selectman Valancourt is right. They, there's no excuse, unfortunately. Okay. You have to have people calling for their rides early. And I know that's problematic. They could come right away. And the people might not want to, gee, I was hoping to get another half hour in. But it's it's problem. You, it, you cannot be open. They need to be exiting okay. the building. Last call is a, is a signal talk, talk to your to patrons it. for them to understand that that's when they should be considering actually leaving. And I think it's... I, I, I hope no business is watching saying that we would ever discourage anybody calling a taxi no. as opposed to having individuals we, no, get into a car. But you, as the manager, <coughs> you have to understand that that's, you know, you're coming here telling us that this is a regular occurrence. I would think that there would have been a discussion, you know, how do we get around this so that we're in compliance and our patrons remain safe. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what you're encountering right now, a frustrated board that, you know, once, given the history, and it's not your history, but given the history of that location, and we're excited that you've, you've, you've been largely compliant. but. Yeah. Um, I mean, I. It's a good time to be happy. testing because at least the weather is warm. If we're not in the middle of the winter, as you're telling people, they need to exit in the cold. And, and we applaud you for making that effort to call the taxis, yeah. for the taxis and cars or whatever Ubers, whatever for the agents. Mm -hmm. That's that's a nice service that you do, and make sure people get home safe. But you know, if you have to start early, you have to start earlier because okay. yes, you need to plan out. If they got to wait outside, then. But having said that. If someone had a ride that left them there and they are not fit to, to be driving, we don't want you to shoo them in their car and tell them to drive home either. If you need the assistance of the police, just call them and say, listen, we're trying to close, but we we don't want you to do that either. No, sometimes we even drive people home ourselves, like we have both have done in the past. I see. Mm -hmm. Do we need a motion, um, motion so to close the public hearing? Most, do we hear a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. Okay. All, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Public hearing is now closed. Um, okay, giving a giving a past history, you know, times uh, first offense is usually a, a warning for these people, but let them know at the same time <clears throat> if they have another offense within a certain amount of months, especially if they have it real soon, it could be anywhere from from a week to three weeks. It's our our discretion, but. Yeah. I can I never remember 11 years as licensing chairman ever given anything more than the warning on the, on the first one, so. Uh, I, and, and I would yeah. support that. I think yeah. um, this is a business that has been doing a, a good job up there, and they've been up there for three years and trying to work hard and, and establish themselves, and they offer a variety of menu items, and I think, you know, I think uh, a warning, in, in my opinion, is sufficient at this point, and then, you know, let's hope we never see you back in front of us. Yeah. Um, you know, you follow your, the licensing rules and, and what is stipulated on your license, we won't see you back. But I think, um, in my opinion, I, I agree with Selectman Stewart, I've been wanting 
warning would be um, the way I would recommend going forward. Can I just add one thing, though? It's also, too, you can't lock the doors and have your staff sitting at the bar drinking either. That's Yes, we understand, understand that. that. Okay. Okay. We, I don't drink. <laughs> no, that helps. That's a good in your position right now. Can, can I say that my disappointment is I know that we have we oftentimes focus on you know, the underage serving. For me, this is disappointing because, I mean, I'm sure employees are very cognizant of what time. I mean, I don't know many people who are working a shift like that who forget for 90 minutes that they're supposed to be going home, and to have 10 to 12 patrons there is not having you know a simple handful. And that's 10 to 12 patrons that you serve for an extra hour and 15 minutes. I mean, making money, which is great. We want our businesses to make money. But not every bar gets to do that. And so I, I, I hope that's not, I mean, I, I take it very seriously. I may even take it more seriously than even you know the accidental um, serving. Because I understand when people are busy, if you forget to check an ID, I understand that. I, I don't know many people that forget and keep working for 90 minutes. So I'm going to throw that out there because that's what the excuse was that you just gave to us, that for 90 minutes people continued to work after they should have gone home after midnight. So I would encourage you in the future to absolutely, I mean, I, I, I won't buck what really has been a trend, which is your first offense, there's, there's a warning. but. Um, I, I don't view this as, as lax. I view this as one of the more serious things because I think there's such a temptation to stay open and continue serving to make that extra money, um, which we we don't want people breaking the rules to mm -hmm. do that and think that they're only just going to have to come before us and get a warning but still profit from that, that rule breaking. So, um, Do I hear a motion? Did Don? Did Don? Did Don? I'll second John's so, motion for a uh, warning. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Hearing any oppositions? We're officially giving a warning by the, the Board of Selectmen acting, acting as licensing commissioners for the town. And thank you, oh. Sergeant, for being such a thing to do. And thank you, Joyce, for staying and, and swearing in. Gentlemen, thank you for coming. I mean, you don't, don't feel like you have to stick around. Um, and uh, with that, that is all that is on the agenda. Unless I come to the list of page. Thank you. How can I? Uh, so do I hear a motion to move out of licensing? So moved. Second. Carrying okay, Selectman Ballancourt. Um, motion and Selectman Smedeley second. I'm all in favor of moving out of licensing. Aye. 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 Okay, so we're back. We have nothing on the agenda for old business, nothing on the agenda for new business. Um, public comment. Uh, Joyce, anything? Joyce, anything to say? You're the only public in there. I think there's a no. <laughs> Um, town manager's report. Um, ask the manager. Mr. Manager, any questions just come in? Uh, well, uh, for four items that we're working on that we could uh, form in the form of questions. Uh, the first is that we're meeting with some folks uh, to talk about the prospect of textile recycling. So mm -hmm. having a company independently at no cost uh, off the ability to go house to house picking up uh, textiles, which takes uh, product out of our waste stream. There's a secondary market for textiles. Uh, they used to call them oh, man, textiles. Way back you're close. Oh, not yet close, but generally clothing, textiles, textiles. Um, bed sheets, clothing, all your old t-shirts. All your old t -shirts. All your they used to go in the in the in the in the painters bin. Painters <laughs> bin, yeah. <laughs> the uh, so so there's more to follow on that. We're meeting with some uh, folks to to get a better understanding of what it means to the community. Uh, Segue into that, our uh, trash contract is up next uh, August, September. Uh, we will begin the process of obtaining uh, quotes and selecting a replacement trash contractor um, beginning next year, but we're going to start that process now so we can identify the new contractor early enough to begin a transition. That will lead to some discussions on how recycling will be handled because the agreement with recycling is a separate and discrete agreement, and so we've got to figure out how that's all going to work. Uh, are we are we envisioning the same type of pickup? I mean, are we Four going to fight? Are we going to fight to maintain We're single stream weekly? <laughs> are we fighting to maintain single stream weekly pickup? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, on recycling or on trash? Trash. Well, yeah, trash, trash is always single stream. Trash is free. That's one yeah. stream for trash. Uh -huh. So the trash contract will uh, will look to align the service that we have today. It could be very similar. I okay. wouldn't expect that. Okay. Um, the recycling again is a little more complicated because we have an agreement about doing that, and and this, you know, we have questions about the long term, you know, how we're going to proceed. So that's a more complicated agreement mm -hmm. or discussion. Um, Solar was approved, or uh, a, the planning board approved the solar project at at Osgood. I previously communicated with you 
the general layout of what solo will look like around there. Um, you know, there's an appeal period. I would expect that appeal period will come and go. Um, and so I, I, I do fully expect that there'll be solar on the Osgood site on or around the size of the project that was uh, has come up before this board on several different occasions about uh, six megawatts. I think I got that right. So mainly on the roof then? Not mainly on the roof. Uh, one third on the roof, two thirds um, along the, primarily in the back of the building. Yeah, so nothing, I, I always get this backwards, but as I'm looking at the building, I, my perspective is easy to look at the building. As I'm looking at the building, nothing on the left side of the building where there was about one third of the total set of panels was originally proposed, the board's response was largely around the left, right? And then the carports have gone away, all surface mount panels at this point. Um, so no carport canopies. Uh, the amount on the roof has stayed largely the same, but most of the panels have moved. Um, some were behind now, almost all are behind. None on the left as you're looking at the building, um, but some on the right about halfway back and further back. So the planning board has uh, is, is completed that, and, and I would expect that you're gonna see that. Um, they run to some sort of pressure to have to complete it by certain deadlines to meet certain milestones to get the kinds of uh, rebates and other things that they're looking for. So I would expect that it's very possible you'll start to see solar panels uh, within 60 to 90 days and, and then the, the function fully operational by, you know, end of year, 1st of January. Uh, two agreements are required for them to proceed, net metering credit agreement and a pilot agreement. Uh, those will be approved, have to be approved by the board. Um, so I haven't had conversations with them about those things because we needed to get through the land use process, but I would expect that we'll begin to have discussions on both, not unlike we did a little bit with Brooks. I think I've identified that in several emails to the board in the past. And then I'll present to the board what I think is supportable, um, and the board will have to decide if it wants to proceed in that direction. Pilot agreements go on for long periods of time, so they exceed, you know, they need board approval, and the, the net meeting credit deal is certainly more than the three years required under most contracts. So net meeting credit will mean we're getting a discount on the electricity, discount off our electricity bills. And the pilot agreement is a payment in lieu of taxes agreement associated with the value of the project and getting a steady annual payment associated with that. But that's to come, and again, I think I've certainly brought that to the board's attention, but we're getting closer with it. That's going to be reality, close to reality on that. Uh, the, I met with the electrical aggregation folks today. We passed at a town meeting. Um, they're putting together sort of a single sheet that outlines the next steps. And I'll be giving that to the board so you understand what the next steps are. The next step for the board will be to approve, I can't even remember what the name of the document is, but in essence says, okay, town meeting approve this, and we're going to start. And that document then gets sent off to the Commonwealth, who has a four to six month process to, I'm not quite sure what they do, that's part of the reason for the document. And then after that approval from the state, then there'll be a very elaborate communication process with residents. But the next step is for the board to approve. Um, or send approval that we're going to make the next step, and that is to apply to the Commonwealth to allow us to do the electrical electric. Um, so I'd expect that in the next, if not next meeting, uh, the meeting after. And that's all about putting a third, a third party individual in it. So instead of national grid, yes. we're getting power from somewhere else. And so for anybody, like for instance, my, myself, anybody with a third party already in place would not be switched. It's pot, you know, I've heard stories all over the place. The standard rule of thumb has been if it depends upon what you agree to when you entered. If you agree to some kind of contract that, that either charges you for removing yourself from that particular relationship, if there's not an out clause, then you probably are where you are. Mm -hmm. um, we've heard stories that when, we, when communities have aggregated, uh, the aggregation company has been willing to make calls to individual suppliers to find out to get those people out of their agreements. So I, I would go in with the assumption that if you've agreed to participate with an alternative supplier for three, four, five, six, seven years, you're probably not going to go to this. Mm -hmm. But there is some possibility that would be different. Mm -hmm. But there'll be there'll be a postcard before a letter, before north end of a cam stuff, before all kinds of notification, and then continuing after the switchover, uh, there'll be an ongoing uh, point of contact and 1-800 number that you can call, not just National Grid or us, but call the company who's coordinating for that, us, that for us directly. So if a resident has a question, how come this is this way or how come it's worked this way, they'll have a ready access even beyond the point of transition to the supplier. So but I think a message that should go out to the citizens of North End the calls that you're getting daily from electric companies and deals is not this agreement. No, that's not the same. I'm, I'm getting three and four calls, you know. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's so possible it's, that people so watch town meeting and say, hey, since the town's doing this, maybe we'll stop the call and we'll get some Well, business. I've been getting plenty. Um, yep. So. And, okay. And th thank you for really making this room feel very comfortable. I turned down the AC to 55 oh, feet. Oh, that's why it didn't, it didn't jump down the stairs. So I have to check on that. I but bypassed thank, it. Thank you, Ray, for the <laughs> We know it's important. Joyce and Don remind me every day it's all my fault. <laughs> okay. Uh, anything else under the comment? In you your packet, we have the um, fire report, the police report, and the opiate report. Yep. And the uh, report's coming from the reports are being changed uh, slightly by both of the new chiefs to, to sort of have the signature on them. Um, I know that uh, Chief Gray specifically is working for some modifications of reports to provide data in a different fashion. And you'll start to see that in the reports. Yeah, that's really helpful. Yeah, this. Yeah. And I think the open report is, if you watch look at yeah. the open report, it's, it's helpful to understand what's happening. Yeah. Both and all the reports are very comprehensive and there's a lot of information. Okay. Our next meeting will be August 15, 2016 at 7 p.m. right here in this building, in this room. <laughs> um, Don, do I have a motion? Oh, move, move to adjourn. Do I have a second? Any discussion on that second. motion? No discussion. All those in favor? Aye.